What if the first chapter of human history in the Americas is wrong? Not just the date, but the entire story. For decades, the narrative seemed settled. A single wave of pioneers journeyed across a lost continent of ice, spreading through a new world. But deep beneath the sun-drenched coast of Mexico, in a labyrinth of black water and absolute silence, discoveries are being made that challenge everything we thought we knew. Skeletons locked in stone for millennia are finally speaking, and they tell a story far more complex, more mysterious, and more human than we ever imagined. This isn't just about rewriting a textbook. This is about uncovering a lost history of humanity itself. Beneath the jungle near Tulum, there is another world, a maze of limestone tubes that carry still black water. Divers call them cenotes, sacred wells of the ancient Maya. But they are also something else, perfect time capsules. During the last ice age, when sea levels were over 300 feet lower, these caves were dry. They were shelters, pathways, and sometimes deadly traps. People and giant beasts, saber-toothed cats, towering sloths, wandered in. Then, as the great glaciers melted, the oceans rose. Water flooded these chambers, sealing them from the wind, the sun, and the destructive forces of time. Whatever lay inside was protected, frozen in a silent, watery tomb. That is why Mexico's Yucatan caves have become the epicenter of a fierce debate over who the first Americans were and how they got here. The challenge is immense. Hundreds of kilometers of submerged passages braid beneath the coast. Exploring them is like navigating another planet, but the reward is unprecedented. In these dark rooms, where light hasn't existed for over 10,000 years, divers have found more than a dozen ancient human skeletons. But time is a cruel archivist. The warm, salty water that preserves the shape of bone also devours its most precious secret, its DNA. For years, these skeletons were beautifully preserved, yet genetically silent. They could be dated, but their ancestry remained a mystery. Dating itself is a marvel of ingenuity. In normal archaeological sites, scientists use radiocarbon dating on bone collagen. Here, the collagen is long gone, so researchers turn to the cave itself. As water dripped over the bones in the darkness, it left a thin mineral crust of calcite. This crust contains trace amounts of uranium, which decays into thorium at a perfectly steady rate. By measuring these isotopes, scientists can date the calcite like a tiny geological clock, giving them a minimum age for the bone locked inside. Using this method, one woman's story began to emerge from the darkness. Discovered in a chamber known as Chan Hole, or Little Hole, her remains were dated to be at least 9,900 years old. Her bones were a testament to a brutal existence. Her teeth were riddled with cavities, a clue that her diet was surprisingly rich in sugars from fruits or starches. Her skull told an even harsher story. Three separate healed injuries. She had survived repeated, violent blows to the head. Despite this, she lived into her early 30s, a respectable age for the era. But it was the shape of her skull that created a scientific firestorm. It was relatively round, with a broad face and low forehead. This matched other skeletons found in the Yucatan. Yet hundreds of miles away in central Mexico, ancient skulls from the same period looked completely different. They were long and narrow. At face value, it looked like two entirely different groups of people were living in Mexico at the same time. This simple observation fueled a decades-long debate. Were the first Americans two separate stocks, one that arrived and was later replaced? Or was this just natural variation within a single, widespread population? The bones themselves couldn't answer. They were a riddle, and the key to solving it, DNA, seemed lost forever. Until one discovery changed everything. In 2007, divers mapping a colossal underwater pit called Hoyo Negro, the black hole, saw something their lights could barely comprehend. At the bottom of the abyss, surrounded by the bones of extinct Ice Age beasts, lay the nearly complete skeleton of a teenage girl. She would come to be known as Naya. She was 15 or 16 years old when she fell into this pit, some 13,000 years ago, when it was still a dark, dry cavern. Her preservation was astonishing, and like the others, her skull had the distinct Paleo-American shape. 
long and narrow, different from most modern Native Americans, and different again from the round skulls of Chon Hull. She was a perfect example of the mystery. But Naya held a secret that the others had lost. Deep within the enamel of one of her teeth, protected from the corrosive water, a fragile trace of genetic material had survived. Against all odds, scientists were able to extract fragments of her mitochondrial DNA, the genetic code passed down only from mother to child. The results were stunning. Naya belonged to a maternal lineage known as haplogroup D1. This specific genetic marker has a clear origin. It was born in Beringia, the Ice Age land bridge that once connected Siberia and Alaska. And it is a lineage found widely among Native Americans today, from North to South America. The link was undeniable. This young woman, who died 13,000 years ago in a Mexican cave and whose skull looked so different, was not part of a lost, unrelated people. She was a direct ancestor. She was family. In one stroke, Naya's tooth united the two pieces of evidence that had seemed to contradict each other. The different skull shapes, round in one region, long in another, were not evidence of separate migrations or replacement. Instead, they were simply the natural, diverse variations within a single founding population that spread and adapted with incredible speed across a vast new continent. The debate wasn't over but its central question had been transformed. It was no longer about who the first Americans were, but about how quickly and profoundly they changed. Naya's DNA seemed to bring clarity, anchoring the story of the first Americans to a timeline of around 13,000 years. But just as the picture was coming into focus, another discovery, far from the warm waters of the Yucatan, threatened to shatter it completely. High in the mountains of northern Mexico sits Chiquihuite Cave. Dry, cold, and nearly 9,000 feet above sea level, it's a world away from the cenotes. In 2020, archaeologists excavating its deepest layers published a claim that shook the foundations of American prehistory. They reported evidence of human presence in the cave dating back an astonishing 30,000 years. If true, this would mean people were in Mexico during the brutal peak of the last ice age, more than double the age of Naya, and long before the Beringian land bridge was thought to be easily crossable. The evidence rests on thousands of stone fragments that the researchers identify as tools, sharp flakes, cores, and points, layered deep within sediments dated by radiocarbon. But there is a glaring omission. The one thing that would silence the critics, human DNA or bones, they found none. Without them, the case for a 30,000-year-old human presence depends entirely on whether these stones are truly human-made artifacts, or simply geofacts, rocks broken by natural processes, like falling, freezing, or pressure. And here, the scientific world is deeply divided. Skeptics argue the shapes are ambiguous and lack the clear hallmarks of deliberate craftsmanship. They warn that such an extraordinary claim requires ironclad proof, and these stones are not it. Supporters, however, point to the sheer number of fragments and their consistent placement within the layers, arguing that nature alone cannot explain what they've found. And so we are left with two tantalizing stories from Mexico's ancient caves. In the Yucatan, we have Naya, a 13,000-year-old girl with a face from the distant past, but whose DNA provides a rock-solid link to the indigenous peoples of today. She is the anchor, the confirmed truth pulled from the dark. And in Chiquihuite, we have a whisper, an argument written in ambiguous stone that tempts us with a much deeper, more revolutionary timeline a ghost migration whose people have otherwise vanished from the record. Could both be true? Could there have been earlier, failed migrations into the Americas? Small groups who arrived, survived for millennia, and then disappeared, leaving only the faintest of traces? The caves have revealed so much, yet their greatest lesson may be one of humility. Each skeleton that yields its secrets, like Naya, is a miracle. 
For every one of them, there are countless others that will remain forever silent, their stories lost to time. The history of the first people to call the Americas home is not a single straight line, but a complex tapestry woven with threads of incredible resilience, adaptation, and mystery. And the search for its beginnings continues. The past is never truly silent. You just have to know where to listen.